Join me, 48 Hours Correspondent Erin Moriarty, on my podcast, My Life of Crime, as I take on true crime investigations like no other. This season, I'm looking into the labyrinth of crime and secrets within families. I'm cutting straight to the evidence and talking to the people directly involved, including investigators and the families of victims. Listen to My Life of Crime with Erin Moriarty wherever you get your podcasts. Today on CityCast Philly. Watching movies during the holidays is one of my favorite family-friendly pastimes, especially with it getting a bit chilly out. So today we're revisiting a conversation our host Trine Nuri had with the CEO of the Philadelphia Film Society about the best movies featuring Philly. It's Friday, December 29th. I'm Abby Fritz, filling in for Trine Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. Andrew Greenblatt, you're the CEO and executive director of the Philadelphia Film Society, and you all host the annual Philadelphia Film Festival every year. I'm guessing you like movies, right? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, I love movies. I I watch somewhere around 400 a year, which is what? only half of what my artistic director watches. So he gets the real credit. But uh, I'll, wow. I'll, I'll take the, the one a day average and run with it. So, Andrew, we wanted to talk to you about movies that were either filmed in Philly or take place in the city. Because there are a lot of good ones, actually. And some people, you know, may be surprised. I feel like, you know, though, we have to start the conversation at the most obvious one, Rocky. What's your opinion on this movie? I'm pretty sure that they passed a law about 30 years ago that you're not allowed to say anything bad about Rocky. <laughs> um, at least the original one. Uh, right, right. And, and some of the sequels, you know. I, in, in my opinion, you know, there's like four Rockies and then it skips to Rocky Balboa and we don't <laughs> talk about anything in the center. Um, but uh, I, I mean, I, I love Rocky. I love Rocky for, you know, everything it is. It's, you know, it's a quintessential underdog story. It's one of the most successful right. independent films of all time. It is a love letter to Philadelphia and it embodies the Philadelphia spirit. So there's, there's really... You know, nothing uh, not to love. And it's a sports film. And God knows Philly loves its sports and its sports films. So, uh, so yeah, no, Rocky is uh, is fantastic. I was going to say, like, why do you think Philadelphians are so attached to this particular storyline? You know, I think people, I think inherently people relate to being underdogs, right? And they relate to wanting to achieve beyond your means, beyond what you imagine could happen, you know, I think that's, that's what Rocky is all about. And it's kind of what the city's all about. I mean, even when the Eagles won a Super Bowl, right? They did it as the underdogs yes. that no one believed in. You know, when the Phillies won a World Series back in 08, they were not the favorite team. They were underdogs. They had to they had to fight through it. So it's, I, I think that's inherent to our nature, especially in sports. And I love the Rocky series. And I also love how uh, the team or the creators also shifted and gave us a new character in the movie Creed. And, you know, I, I love that series as well. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I think Ryan Coogler did such an incredible job with Creed. Uh, and, you know, you, you read about the the backstory where, you know, Stallone was done with Rocky. You know, Rocky Balboa felt like the perfect nightcap for him. It was a proper way to end the character. And Ryan was coming off of Fruitvale Station, uh, which was that huge Sundance hit. And the only thing he wanted to do was make Creed. And he had to pitch and beg and convince Stallone. And thank God he was you know, really successful at it because we got another quintessential Philadelphia sports film. Okay, what's another movie set in Philly that you love? So, I mean, there's so many set in Philly. Uh, I, I tend, I think, to gravitate towards the ones that, really show Philly for Philly. Like there's a ton of things that have shot here that, you know, Philly stands in for New York, Philly stands in for, for somewhere else. But the ones that really 
embrace the city are, are the ones that I, I like the most. So, I mean, and sticking with sports for a minute, right? Like mm-hmm. something like Silver Linings Playbook, which is so Philly, uh, right. you know, and, and, and it gets it right. Or even most recently, Hustle. Uh, which yeah. is again, I feel like every the Adam Sandler movie, right? That's right. Yeah, every decade we get at least one new Philly sports film that gets to punch that ticket to the pantheon, and, uh, and Hustle is this one for this decade so far. Silver Linings and Creed were last decade, but they all they all embrace the city as well as what they do, which is tell an incredible story that is uh, engaging and. Uh, you know, sometimes you laugh, sometimes you cry, but it's in all of them, you know, Silver Linings, Hustle, Creed, you get that feeling that they know Philly, they're part of Philly. And that's, I think, why we respond to those films as well. Another film that I like, uh, Pride, which was about the youth swim team from a Philadelphia rec center and it starred um, Terrence um, oh Howard. Yes. And uh, Bernie Mac. And it was based on a true story about this youth swimming team from Philly that like crushed a swim team from the main line. And, you know, they faced a lot of racial injustice. It's not like a typical sports movie, but it's, it's definitely Philly based. And I think it, you know, kind of goes to some of the similar themes that you just mentioned. It does. It does. The reason I I didn't talk about it is it didn't shoot here. Uh, And I was, was, so it does, it is a Philly story through and through. Right. Uh, But it didn't actually shoot in the city. I would say there's a film called the nomads, which is, um, you know, about a, like a North Philly rugby team uh, that came out, I think three, four years ago. Uh, And that's, so that's shot here and it's about a Philly tie or, Concrete Cowboys, which is not sports yes, for a second, yes. but uh, but it, it's about the you know the Strawberry Mansion riders and the, uh, all up in North Philly uh, and the stables and you know that's what a what an incredible part of our culture that most people don't know about uh, and then to see a movie uh, like Concrete Cowboys come out about it and then you know premiere in Toronto and sell to Netflix I mean that's pretty spectacular. Yo. There's a horse. In your house. Oh, this you right here. I ain't staying here. All right. Once you step out, that door stays locked till morning. We have a really, really strong history of independent films that have shot here. Uh, noteworthy ones with incredible actors who come to town, sometimes under the radar, sometimes before they, they pop. There's a film called night catches us that yeah which, yeah, I've seen you, that. You know that? yeah i actually saw yeah. i think i saw that at the film festival we we did we had it uh we had kerry washington come in with it yeah yeah um, i think i was there yeah oh it was it was such a fun i think it was our closing night that year and it was was that the it prince was a blast. theater it was at the prince mm-hmm. uh, and we had tanya hamilton the director and kerry was there and i remember asking uh we were standing on the side ready to go for the q a and the credits were rolling and I asked them, do you, do you guys want to cut the music and start or do you want to let it run all the way? And I, I, I think it was Carrie who said, isn't it a crime to cut off the roots in Philadelphia? And I said, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. We're going to let it run. Andrew, can you just tell um, our audience uh, what that film's about if they're not familiar with it? I think it's like late 70s. And it deals with the Black Panther movement and a former Panther that's coming back to Philadelphia and he's been away and, you know, he's not sure how things are going to you know, play out and how the, how the culture is at that time. Anthony Mackie plays the, the former Panther who returns. Kerry Washington plays the wife of a Panther that's been killed. Tariq Trotter, you know, Black Thought is in the movie as well. It's, I mean, it's a crazy great cast and, and it was a great movie. We were, we were thrilled to have that Philadelphia premiere. I feel like in this conversation, we can't forget about director M. Night Shyamalan. He grew up in the burbs of Philly and sets many of his movies in and around the city. For example, The Sixth Sense or Unbreakable. Do you have a favorite of his? I do. I do. My favorite is Unbreakable. Um, I remember seeing Unbreakable right when it came out. And it it was the movie that followed up The Sixth Sense. So that was his huge breakout. And the expectations couldn't have been higher 
And he really made the first comic book movie. If you just think about how far ahead of time he was, this is this is before the marvelization of the movies, right? Mm -hmm. And he made this incredible story, like this origin story. I mean, it might be one of Bruce Willis's finest performances. It's it's just a spectacular film. I remember just being blown away by it. Why are you looking at me like that? Your train derailed. Some kind of malfunction. I only found two people alive so far. You and this man. His skull was cracked open and most of his left side was crushed. And to answer your question, there are two reasons why I'm looking at you like this. One, because it seems in a few minutes that you will officially be the only survivor of this train wreck. And two, because you didn't break one bone. You don't have a scratch on you. Angie, before we let you go, what do you think is the most underrated film set in Philadelphia? Wow. Oh, underrated film set in Philadelphia. Um, films that shot Philadelphia for not exactly Philadelphia. I, I love 12 Monkeys. It's like a personal favorite. It's, it's a crazy time travel, you know, all of that fun stuff. Can you actually explain that for me? I, I'm, I, I'm not familiar. <laughs> 12 Monkeys. Oh, my goodness. Uh, 12 Monkeys is a film by Terry Gilliam, and it's about a man, Bruce Willis, who, who shot so many films in Philadelphia, for the record. He might right, be, right. Yeah, he might have done the most out of anybody. Um, but he, he says he's from the future where there's a virus, a deadly virus that destroyed the world, and he came back in time to try to stop it before it spreads. And people have to decide whether they believe him or not. And it's him, and it's Madeline Stowe, and it's Brad Pitt. And it's fantastic. Um, highly, highly recommended. And I also, I couldn't not mention Trading Places, right? I mean, Classic. it's one of the most brilliant comedies ever. It's so smart. And, and it did shoot Philadelphia back before anyone was shooting Philadelphia. And of course, I mean, you can't talk about Philadelphia without talking about Philadelphia, right? You know, Tom Hanks, Denzel Washington, yep. the movie that really put Philadelphia on the filmmaking map. All right, explain this to me like I'm a two-year-old, okay? Because there's an element to this thing I just cannot get through my thick head. Didn't you have an obligation to tell your employer you had this dreaded, deadly, infectious disease? That's not the point. From the day they hired me to the day I was fired, I served my clients consistently, thoroughly, with absolute excellence. If they hadn't fired me, that's what I'd be doing today. And it was that film, I think that was the first film to go through the newly formed uh, Greater Philadelphia Film Office. And then from there, we just get all of those great posters that you see walking between Terminal A and Terminal B in the airport. That's where it starts, really. Even though Rocky came before it, that's where the film office came in and where the, the run really began. Andrew Greenblatt, CEO and Executive Director of the Philadelphia Film Society. Thank you so much for chatting with me about all these movies. And I definitely have to check out 12 Monkeys. I feel like now I have so many new things to check out. <laughs> check out the Philadelphia Film Society's latest film screenings at filmadelphia.org. We'll have links in our show notes. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. Our executive producer is Laura Benshaw. Our producers are me, Abby Fritz, and Elizabeth Kama. Our Hey Philly newsletter editor is Joel Wolfram, and our host is Trinae Nuri. Music is by Philly's own Interminable, with additional music from all the kimonos and James Weldon. If you enjoyed the show, tell a friend, rate the show, leave us a review, and subscribe to our morning newsletter, Hey Philly. We'll be back Tuesday morning with more news from all around the city. Have a great New Year's and be safe. Bye. Bye.